Just one quick correction to something that was said before the break uh, regarding broadband and broadband in Wales in particular. Uh, Simon Reno of the Welsh Government's Digital Wales team uh, advised me that although the contract with BT is for 96% coverage, uh, the Welsh Government itself is committed uh, through related initiatives to ensuring 100% coverage. So in Wales at least, you've got it right. Well done. Okay, uh, our next speaker is uh, Chintan Patel. Uh, Chintan is the Head of Collaboration, Sales and Business Development for Cisco, a company that I think needs little further introduction. Uh, he's held senior positions with leading telecommunications firms, Nortel Aptis, for example, and Netcentrix, and with the Lloyds Bank Financial Services, combination of experience which I think enables him to bridge the worlds of business and technology. And he's going to share with us, I hope, how collaboration is tru truly changing the way that we work and influences uh, the influences that mobile devices uh, have on our lives. So, Chintan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. And it's uh, a pleasure to be here. So, uh, um, what I'm going to talk about today is really how um, digital technology is shaping the way we all work, both uh, you know, from a work perspective but also in our personal lives, and uh, look at how some of these digital technologies are really affecting the way organisations are um, uh, working today, but also will continue to work going forward as well. So hopefully there will be some uh, insight in here in terms of some of the trends that are taking place and how they are uh, affecting either you as organisations today or, or potentially going forward. So when we think about it, actually digital technology really affects each and every one of us. I mean, you know, we're using technologies today to do work, uh, to conduct our personal lives, which perhaps didn't exist many years ago. And uh, we'll kind of cover some of those areas because I think it's important to look back as to what we didn't have before and how we used to communicate and collaborate and how these things have now infiltrated our lives and uh, we're using them for our day-to-day -day activities. So if we think about it from a, from a landscape perspective, I mean, what's happening at a macro level uh, in terms of kind of trends in the, in the industry? Well, think about this. About 10 years ago, just a, just a decade, there were no social networks. So the fact that probably every one of us here, in some way, shape, or form, has a social network of one form or another, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, or, or any of the other hundreds that you could potentially think of, you know, each and every one of us is involved in one of those today. Yet 10 years ago, social networks didn't even exist. 10 years before that, we didn't even have the internet or the web. Look how uh, addicted we are to the internet now, and, and, and look how important it is to our lives uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, not just from a personal perspective, but also from a work perspective. And work used to be considered a place. I mean, work was where you know, you'd, you'd get in for 9 o'clock in the morning uh, and you'd do your work and then you'd leave at 5 o'clock or 5.30 or if you're, you're working a little bit of overtime, maybe 6 or 6.30. And that was pretty much it. I mean, you know, work was considered a place that you went to and um, you know, your work was confined to that particular environment. <clears throat> and workplaces for over the last many, many years have been defined and, and built on the premise that actually work is conducted either at home or probably more latterly, you know, obviously, sorry, I should say, primarily in the office and then more latterly people working from home as flexible working has really driven uh, forward. And this is where, you know, kind of the workplace has really been defined. And what we're seeing now is actually the nature of work has fundamentally changed. We've got the opportunity through digital technologies to work from pretty much anywhere, you know, uh, given the right broadband access obviously is critical. Um, but, you know, we've, we've pretty much got access through mobile technology, etc., to be functional and operative from any number of different locations, whether it's at home, whether it's in the office, whether it's on the road, whether it's at a customer or partner site, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you're probably all living and breathing this sort of an environment today. <clears throat> and what that means is, is that we're moving from this notion of kind of the workplace to the workspace, and actually we're moving to this notion where it's really around working moments, where you get gaps in the day, where you actually conduct, you know, critical things. So, you know, I, I tend to get a lot of work done um, just after my daughter's gone to sleep. And, you know, I use that opportunity to, um, you know, do some work in the evening, etc., and get things done. But I've got the flexibility to come home early and spend some time with my daughter um, before she goes to sleep. So, you know, technology is allowing us to get work done. And so these working moments are really becoming critical because they allow you to become productive regardless of what your life is um, based on. 
Now, the nature of work has fundamentally changed as well. So how we work, you know, the kind of things we do, the number of people that we have to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, the number of people uh, when we work, as I mentioned, in terms of the time, where we work, as, uh, as we also talked about in terms of location, and more importantly, the kind of tools that we use. You know, no longer is it just about that one device that we want to work from, but it's multiple devices. And really, when you think about it, collaboration really becomes more critical than ever when you consider all of these things coming together. Because this diversity of locations, this diversity of people, this diversity of applications and devices that we're all having to use means that collaboration becomes even more important across these different environments. So what we want has also changed. I mean, that's kind of the macro trends. What we want as individuals has also changed. At Cisco, every year we conduct this survey called the Connected World Survey. And what we do is we, uh, we interview <clears throat> uh, organizations, individuals, uh, pretty much anyone we can get hold of um, in a survey which is conducted with tens of thousands of users, sort of uh, employees, uh, users, college graduates, etc. Um, across the world. And we kind of get a benchmark of the kind of things that people are looking for uh, as they're coming out of university or they're new into the workplace, etc. And we find very interesting things. And uh, I picked out a few to share with you because I think they're, uh, they're, they're pertinent to some of the things that came out of the UK. Um, and so it's quite interesting. <clears throat> Hopefully you can read that. Uh, two out of five people said they would accept a lower paying job that offered device flexibility. That's fascinating because clearly some of these individuals don't have mortgages. I mean, it would be very interesting <laughs> to see if someone actually practically in reality did this or not. But the idea that if I was able to choose the device that I wanted to use in the workplace, perhaps I didn't want to use a PC, but I wanted to use a Mac. And if the employer was giving me that choice, that I would actually choose that organization over one that uh, <clears throat> was perhaps paying me a higher wage is quite an interesting psychological change that's taking place within kind of the next generation, or the younger generation, let's say, who are coming into our workforces. Um, the other interesting thing, which I think is very prevalent now, is the fact that actually you don't really need to be in an office to be productive. I think given the right access, given the right security policy and controls, you know, you can be productive away from a, a physical location, as it were. So, so that was something that stood out in this survey that we did last year. Um, probably the other interesting one was that one out of three people said they consider the internet, and we talked about our addiction to the internet, as important as life's other essentials. I'd like to see some people live without the others, and, and then they may, may, may reevaluate what they think is important. But, you know, connectivity, and, you know, we, we talked about it earlier in the morning around making sure that broadband availability is there, is really becoming critical because it's, it's really an essential service now in terms of having access to the internet for both public services but also private services. <clears throat> Interestingly, two out of three global college students said they would actually choose an internet connection over a car. Fascinating. I mean, th this is the psychology of individuals that are going to be coming into our workplaces that we might be hiring, um, or you know, our US customers or US organizations. They may be your next customer as well. And a very different psychology in terms of the types of things that they're potentially looking for. And, and often in the industry and in the press, this is cited as kind of Generation Y. Uh, who are coming in into organizations. So, so very interesting statistics in terms of what people are looking for going forward. Now, technology is fundamentally shaping a lot of these different desires and trends going forward. Uh, work used to be a place, as we talked about, and you know, pretty much you'd be tethered to a desktop, and uh, the kind of applications you would use would be very tech-centric. Uh, you know, email, perhaps some portals, perhaps some chat sessions, etc. And what we're really seeing is, is that this is changing because of all these different technologies that are infiltrating the workplace. It's no longer about being tethered to a desktop with very tech-centric applications. And there's actually four things that are changing this. So first and foremost, there's this absolute explosion of mobile devices. We've got this insatiable desire to be connected anytime, anywhere, any place. And the mobile devices are driving that. And interestingly, for the first time last year, it, global PC shipments went down. So the, the dominant piece of computing, which has dominated our lives for the last two decades, dipped in terms of the number of those units that were being shipped. Incidentally, yesterday, Intel announced that they were slowing down the production of their um, uh, products because of the slowdown in the global PC market. A lot of factors for that, obviously, but one of the main reasons is because of the rise of the smartphone and the tablet. People are finding that form factor just good enough to do their day-to-day -day job now, given the right access, security, and applications. 
And you may say, well, okay, so why is that? I mean, lots of, probably lots of different reasons, but we looked into this a little bit and we said, well, actually, why are people preferring to use the tablet format over a laptop or a desktop PC? Clearly, obviously, the mobile benefits are important. A more subtle change, actually, because if you look at most organizations, about 60% of employees are actually content consumers, not necessarily content creators. If you're a content consumer, Again, given the right access, applications, etc., that device is probably just good enough to do your day-to-day -day job. If you're a content creator, clearly you're going to need some other peripheral devices to make sure you're productive. But we see this explosion of mobile devices continuing to, to, to grow at rapid pace. I mean, that's not going to go away anytime soon. The second one is around businesses becoming more social. You know, our desire to rank, tag, tweet, blog, share video in our personal lives is finding its way in some way, shape or form inside organisations. You know, so whether it's you as an organisation allowing people to use, um, you know, social tools to conduct work, or if it's people doing it anyway, uh, because it's an effective way of engaging with customers um, and organisations and individuals, it's happening. And so what we're finding is, is that actually organisations are having to put enterprise controls around these sorts of things. Video is becoming more pervasive. So video, which for a long time uh, perhaps was uh, dedicated to um, executives within an organization or perhaps you know, connecting to far-flung relatives when you're at home, um, you know, is now becoming something that's accepted. And in very simple terms, the fact is that video is absolutely everywhere. I mean, wherever you look at it, I mean, you've got technologies available which have video capabilities in them and people want to use them. And last but not least, the rise of cloud computing. And if you look at this in very simple terms, this is really about the way you consume technologies and, and the way you consume capabilities. And so what we're hearing from a lot of customers and, and the industry is really the way you want to, way organizations want to consume a lot of these capabilities is not by building everything themselves, but perhaps taking it as a cloud service so that it gives you the flexibility. So those are kind of the four things that we see in terms of the shift taking place from a workplace to a workspace. When we think about the mobile devices piece, and I'll go into each of these in a little bit more detail, um, there are a few things happening there. We've talked about um, the tablet and the smartphone. I'll come back to that in a minute. But there's a shift taking place from the PC to the Mac, for example. I mean, we're seeing in organizations of all sizes, whether it's large multinational organizations, mid-sized companies, or two-person organizations, you know, the growth in, in Apple Macs is outpacing the growth in PCs. Now, regardless of whatever religion you're on from an operating system perspective, you know, this, is, this is a change that's absolutely happening across large swathes of the industry and, and organizations. Um, we're seeing the rise in all of the tablets and, and, and devices. So clearly Apple garners a lot of the, uh, uh, the credit for driving that market um, in terms of devices. And uh, I have to give them credit because I saw an interesting statistic the other day which really did shock me. So on average, give or take a few, there are about uh, 4.2 births per second globally. There are about 4.6 iPhones sold globally on average every second. <laughs> Fascinating. So the, the deluge of devices is absolutely going to be upon us. Uh, and then obviously the tablet market's really been shaken up with you know, Apple and others who are driving that. But let's not just think about Apple. Think about what the Android market is doing and what's happening from a uh, Google perspective. Um, Google are activating about 1.3 million Android devices every day, smartphones and tablets. So regardless where the dominant platform in many cases today might be iOS with Apple, you know, we see it, the influx of Android devices absolutely coming to organizations of all sizes as we go forward. And who knows what's next because this diversity is going to continue. And actually, one of the things, this is actually an article that I, uh, 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 a capture that I, I took out of a, an Economist article which took place um, earlier this year, which really talked about um, and backed up the fact that actually, you know, the, the rise in smartphones and tablets are now outstripping PCs and the way that trend is going to continue. And so organizations of all sizes are really thinking about, you know, what investment do you place on, let's say, current legacy PC infrastructure or do you move to a more mobile-centric architecture going forward? Now, the other part of that research, which I thought was very important to, to note, was the fact that actually the number of mobile devices, as I mentioned earlier, will just continue to explode. I mean, actually, this was from earlier this year. Now there's expectations that it will be 15 billion mobile devices connected globally. And, and what that really means for us as organizations is that we've, we've got to think about 
the, the infrastructure that we're building because you know, we're no longer just going to be physically connecting devices to a network. We're going to be wirelessly connecting to them. And there's probably going to be more of those devices. I mean, there are expectations that are actually people will have roughly five to seven devices on average in the next few years that will all be wirelessly connecting to networks, which may be inside your organization or in public spaces. So actually thinking about the design of the network is going to become fundamentally important because not only are people going to connect more devices, but they're going to be expecting to do more things from those devices because those devices are more capable in terms of not just doing email, but actually doing you know, video and other such multimedia capabilities going forward. And actually, I'll just go back one point. I will mention one thing. So at Cisco, we do a lot of work with a lot of the device manufacturers, so like Apple, Samsung, and others. In about five years' time, they're not going to be designing products that actually have Ethernet ports in them. So actually, the way you design your infrastructure going forward is going to become critical because our desire to be more mobile means they're making products which are lighter, faster, etc., which means they have to make design decisions in terms of hardware aesthetics. And so that, that consideration of wireless networks becomes even more important as we go forward. The second piece I mentioned was video becoming more pervasive. So I look at this in very, very simple terms. You can't buy a device today that isn't video enabled. So whether it's a PC or a Mac or a smartphone or a tablet or LG or Samsung TVs which have cameras in the bezels, video will absolutely be everywhere regardless of Cisco likes it or not or whether you as individuals like it or not. Video will absolutely be everywhere. The question is can we connect all of those experiences together so that A, it's absolutely easy to use regardless of whether I'm on one device and someone's on another device, that it's uh, a single button to push, touch, swipe, whatever that device allows. Uh, that it's uh, interoperable, as I mentioned. And lastly, it's of a very, very high quality. Because if video isn't of a very high quality, then the experience is degraded and people don't want to use it. So those are kind of the three things we think are really important to driving video going forward. But clearly, the market and the industry and the devices are driving this in terms of a productivity piece as well. And video, not just from a communications perspective, because we're consuming video at a rate of knots. I mean, an hour's worth of video every second is now uploaded onto YouTube. It's phenomenal. In fact, there are now more how-to searches on YouTube than there are on Google. We are searching for more video content. And it, it's very simple things. You know, I, I had an issue with my Dyson vacuum cleaner uh, a few months ago. And you know, the normal thing you do would be called the Dyson helpline, which would be you know, the, the phone numbers plastered on the, uh, uh, the, the, the vacuum cleaner and, and other such devices. I didn't on this occasion, which I happened to be near my uh, laptop as well, and I just uh, you know, put into Google or YouTube, you know, how do I add this problem? So I put it in, it directed me to the Dyson YouTube website. They had a whole bunch of videos. You know, I used uh, one of the videos to fix the vacuum cleaner. Uh, my wife and family were happy, and you know, I'd, I'd got all that done. And um, the interesting thing there was actually I'd completely circumnavigated the customer service channel for Dyson. They no longer had to have someone who dedicated there to take that phone call uh, around that service. So complete self-service. So, so video is really driving this. And actually at Cisco we do, we do something similar. Many other organizations are doing this where actually we've got tens of thousands of products. We don't develop product data sheets anymore. We get our product managers to sit in front of a camera, talk about the product, talk about the, uh, demonstrate it, and then share it on our external YouTube channels. So actually, we're seeing you know, video being driven from a content distribution and knowledge sharing perspective, and being able to share those messages out far quicker is becoming important. And what you find is actually people would far rather watch a three minute video than read a 10 page document. That's because of our time-constrained lives. And so hence, video, not just from a collaboration perspective, but how you capture video from any one of those devices that now has a camera that we talked about, and actually be able to distribute it en masse very quickly. So the, the third piece was around businesses becoming social. And um, as I mentioned, you know, organizations uh, and individuals have been using social networking tools in their personal lives, but those are finding their way back into organizations. Now, clearly, there are challenges around security. I mean, it's probably every chief security officer's nightmare, or if you're responsible for security within your organization, around the, num the amount of um, information around your company that m or organization that might actually reside on public, public sites like Dropbox and other such things. And actually, the, w the way to tackle this is to, to create a, a drive towards enterprise social software, which will actually give you security and the ability to collaborate using these things, like blogging, tweeting, etc., which are, which are becoming fundamentally important to us, but doing them in a way that become uh, secure and manageable. 
The other, the other aspect of this is, is the way as we as individuals now actually want to interact with organizations and, and, and the companies that we want to deal with. Um, what we're finding is, is that no longer do we want to sit down and write a letter. No longer do we want to pick up the phone and call the help desk for an organization and tell them how bad their service was or you know, where you know, the, the, the product didn't arrive or whatever it might be. That, that level of feedback we don't generally want to do using the traditional communications tools. What we'd far rather do is we'll tell 10 friends on Facebook and we'll tell another few friends on Twitter. And what happens is, is the fact that actually we know that actually you know, on the web bad news travels faster than good news. And it's very interesting because what we found is a lot of organizations are now tapping into the social media challenge, uh, channels as a way to capture information around their particular brand, their particular product, their particular service. So what, what, what this is really telling us is that organizations of all sizes are having to think about how that emerging channel is becoming more important, more important to the way customers want to and organizations want to interact going forward. And then lastly, in terms of how you consume these technologies and solutions. Now, as I mentioned earlier, especially within the, the, the small to medium enterprise space, um, you know, we're seeing a big shift towards companies wanting to not build things, but actually consume a lot of these things as services. And this is really important when it comes to collaboration, because clearly it's a complex area. Clearly the market's changing at such a fast pace. I mean, you know, I certainly wouldn't have been up here three years ago saying tablets will be outstripping PCs in terms of shipments. I mean, the market is just moving at a tremendous rate. So when you think about what you need to do as organizations, it's really going to be important to think about you know, how can you consume these services uh, from a cloud model as opposed to potentially deploying all these things on site. And that's where the flexibility of cloud computing really comes into it. So maybe just a few things to consider having talked about you know, what's happening in the market and, and, and what's happening from a technology perspective. I think in, in, in terms of choosing a new digital strategy, I think building in the ability to, to change and grow is going to be critical, as we said. Technology moving at such a fast pace that you need investment protection. You need the ability to be able to adapt to things uh, as they're changing going forward. The ability to support multiple devices, as we've talked about the fact that actually it's no longer just about one device, but it's actually about the multiple devices that are actually on from different vendors that run different operating systems, that run different browsers. And it's all about being able to cater and support that environment, whether it's in your organization or with your uh, customers and partners. And then understanding your limitations, you know, as, as organizations, you know, if, if you don't have in-house technology and support, this is where the ability to harness some of these things from a cloud service provider, perhaps, who's already built this technology and can deliver this to you in a, in a, in a pay-as-you-go-by-month basis, if you like, becomes far more uh, um, uh, acceptable. And clearly, if we go down this route, there are a number of business benefits. Clearly, there's cost control. You've got the ability to then manage your costs and outlay in terms of how you consume these services. Clearly, with collaboration, it's all about productivity increase. And one of the things that collaboration is really all about, and especially things like video, is to raise the productivity of both your organization, your staff, and how you interact with your customers and partners. Um, the ability to improve better customer services. If you've got reachability anywhere on any device, regardless of where you are, clearly that can be a good thing from a customer service perspective as well as organizations. And obviously, by, by, by its very nature, you have a competitive, a competitive edge if you're able to collaborate faster, get the right expert at the right time in front of your customers and your partners um, and constituents, it's going to be a far more compelling thing going forward. So what I'd like to just uh, cl close off on is really the fact that, you know, are you ready for a world that's you know, going to be more mobile? Because clearly that's absolutely where things are going. You're going to be ready for a world that's becoming more virtual. You know, we're not going to be physically everywhere. But, uh, you know, certainly our virtual instantiations, whether it's on social networks or video, are certainly going to become more critical. Uh, the fact that we are going to be using more video technology, how are you going to harness some of the capabilities of video on the devices that you already have in your organizations? And also it's going to become more social. So the ability to tap into social networks and drive, you know, your agenda through that medium is going to become critically important going forward as well. So I'll just close off there. Um, I think I've got a few minutes perhaps for, uh, for questions if anyone has any. And uh, yeah, open the floor. Lovely, thank you very much indeed, Chantal. Uh, questions? Yes, uh, gentleman at the back in front of the camera. Thanks. Um, hello. 
Uh, I'm going to ask you a difficult question. There are uh, an estimated 3% of people who are sensitive or hypersensitive to electromagnetic fields. Um, uh, that's uh, mobile phones and, and wireless devices to you, to you and me. Are, are these people going to be excluded from the, fruit, from the future? So you, you weren't kidding when you said that was going to be a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I don't have the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, so I won't even attempt to answer it. But uh, I, I don't know if anyone else has got any other comments on it. Um, I would hope not. That would be the answer. Um, but uh, certainly, I, I think that's something we would have to take up with, with the companies that are actually building these uh, particular pieces of technology, whether it be mobile, etc. It worries me when you say that in five years' time, uh, devices will be built without uh, Ethernet. Um, yeah. For wide. No, it's a very valid point. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's worth adding, perhaps, you just do the maths again. 3% is actually a huge market. It is. And yeah. yeah, there are companies around looking for opportunities. And that's obviously one of them. Mm. Yes, uh, at the back. If I could add something to that. Please. Sorry, yes. And it worries me when I see uh, places like Swindon, they've got a sort of wireless network umbrella covering the whole of the town. Mm. So what do people, the 3% of people within Swindon, do they do with that? So it's, uh, mm. I can see the, the technical uh, brilliance of all this mobile technology, but it has to be balanced with um, yeah. uh, biological uh, uh, individuals. Okay, a question back. Sorry, it's more a comment rather than um, a question, but regarding no, your... Not, not an advert, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, regarding your report about mobile devices and the decline of the PC, there's also another factor, which is um, dumb terminals. So mm. now as people are virtualizing, putting their infrastructure in the cloud, the resources you need locally are, are diminishing. So I know there's a lot of thin client um, vendors that are selling millions and millions of units, which are dumb terminals. Yeah. Um, and we've done a cost-benefit analysis, and we are seriously considering wiping out our entire laptop and desktop infrastructure and putting them in because of the cost savings and the energy savings if you're looking to go green. Yeah. They use five watts per day compared to 150 for a laptop. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's another prime factor in the decline of the PC. It's not just mobile devices. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And I think uh, that, that really falls into the virtualization piece as well and, and, and cloud computing. So you know, consuming uh, PC capabilities, if you like, uh, from the cloud as well. So yeah, absolutely agree on that. One more question, maybe? Yes, no? Sorry, one at the front somewhere. Yes, gentleman at the very so, front. Oh, yeah, OK, we'll take two. Gentleman at the front first. Hi, sorry to um, bother you, but um, could you give me the statistics that you gave on the Apple to the PCs, what's actually happening? Uh, so, so what we've seen there, I mean, these, these are industry statistics in terms of it's the, uh, the growth rates of um, uh, the Mac yes. versus the PC are actually growing at a faster rate in, in all segments, whether it's you know, large companies, mid-sized organizations, or small companies. So, so the Mac growth is actually outpacing the PC growth uh, in terms of sales and, and, and units shipped. Thank you. Okay. Okay, final question. Thank you very much. Um, it's another angle towards the um, increased adoption uh, and acceptance of mobility uh, and the adoptions of mobile devices and so on. What do you think it will take to see um, a wider social acceptance to the importance of uh, securing identity online? I work for a company that is uh, involved in the manufacture of security solutions and I'm not going to advertise them. Uh, but even I use an iPhone um, and have uh, social media sites mm. on there which I protect using a username and password. Um, it's clearly, you know, with, with the amount of data that is being transferred in that way, the need to make sure that we are securing our online presence I think is massive and I don't think that that wider acceptance has happened as yet. What's going to trigger that mm. in your view? Mm. I, th I think a, c a couple of things. So, I mean, clearly, uh, 
uh, with this trend of bring your own device, etc., people are starting to use you know, the same device both from a work and a personal perspective and clearly making sure that you can contain or containerize um, what's happening from a personal perspective and a work perspective is going to become critical. So there's technology out there that probably allows you to do that. Possibly your company does that as well. Um, you know, so there's, 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 there's that, that environment. There's also probably more on a fundamental level, it's the, the user acceptance policies within organizations. So, uh, you know, certainly at Cisco, we've, uh, you know, if I bring my own iPad in, I'm, Cisco's happy for me to use it, uh, but I do have to sign away the fact that actually if I lose that iPad and actually some of Cisco's information resides on it, then the company reserves the right to wipe that device, for example, which means I may lose my uh, uh, Angry Birds score and uh, family photos and things like that. So um, I think it's the acceptable user policies, but you know, technologies do exist um, today around that, um, around actually blending those two things together. Every region should have an e-crime policy. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Could you please show your appreciation? Thank you. Thank you very much.